Okay, class. Writing a question on the board. I want you to take a couple of seconds and think about your answer to the question. What makes something worth reading? And we can put studying here as well. Kaden, what do you think? What makes something worth reading or studying? Um, that is a wonderful question. Probably uh, it gives you some advantage or improves you in some way. Okay, it gives you some advantage, improves you in some way. What would be your thoughts? I'm conflicted with it because things that I find worthy of reading I, I look more for things that entertain me, Okay. Um, but I do, I, I agree that there are certain things that might not be entertaining, but they, they benefit me in educating me on something, mm -hmm. so I, I'm both ways. Yeah, I agree, and um, I guess a lot of it depends on, on what context you're going for. Um, so I have another question. What... What makes something a classic? What qualifies a classic? And this, these are questions we'll be um, continually thinking about through our next book. Um, but what are your thoughts on this right now? What makes something a classic? Whether it's a novel or even music, what makes music classic? I, one thing, and this might sound very superficial, but it has to be at least somewhat Older. Okay, yeah. So. Has to have that, that aging a little mm -hmm. bit. I agree with you there. Um, it's the Norton anthology, old white men, <laughs> is what makes something a classic, really. Okay, it's generally older. And obviously, there are a lot of different things that can play into these questions. Um, the novel that we will be reading next is one that is considered a classic. Um, for a lot of different reasons, and it's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. And I'm sure you have all heard of this book at least, or Tom Sawyer or something. Um, and it is considered... I was watching a show the other day, and the guy said that they had talked with a lot of different people, a lot of educated people in America, on which text they thought that children, teenagers, people should be familiar with in America. And surprisingly, it was this book, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Um, there's been a lot of controversy with this book, but there's a lot of, a lot of good in it. Um, and as I was thinking about, as we're getting ready to study this, what, what makes something worth reading and studying? What makes this book worth reading and studying? And as you study this book and read and take from it what you can, you will be able to answer whether or not you think this book is worth reading or studying. Because um, you can have your own opinion about that, and whether or not you think it is a classic, or if all of us are just crazy and wondering why we, you think we should read this. Um, but to get your mind thinking about this a little bit more, I have some other questions. And if you want to take out a piece of paper, if you have one, to just write on it. It's just a, a scrap paper, you don't need to turn this in. Um, I'm going to write down a few questions, and I want you just, as I write them, write your answer. Um, and if you are familiar with Huckleberry Finn, you might have, your question might be influenced by it, but...
Okay, now with a partner, discuss the answer to one of these questions. You can choose one from your paper and just talk with your partner about what you wrote down. So what things did you talk about? Uh, we, we answered the third question, how do you go about making important decisions? And we both kind of had the same response that we will kind of simulate what would happen where mm -hmm. we can make a specific decision and how that might impact us or, or wherever it would be involving. Mm -hmm. We just play it out in our minds and then if that seems like that would work, that's the decision we go with. Mm -hmm. What if you have a decision before you that is a very conflicting decision? As in, there's like, you have to choose between two evils, I guess you could say. Mm. What do you do there? Um, then, well, depending on the complexity, you run the simulation longer. <laughs> and when you're at an impasse, you just have to rely on your instincts. Just choose one and go Hope for it. Works out. I mean, sometimes we will back out of a decision or kind of make half of one, and uh, I've found that that's ineffective, so I try not to anymore. But uh, at some point, even if you don't make a decision, you are making a decision, so mm -hmm. you just have that's to make one. It, it's, it's a toughie because. Um, one decision, it might be more detrimental to you, mm -hmm. but in another way, it could be more beneficial at the same time. So it really, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And these kind of problems come up in, in life, and it's not always the lesser of two evils. Sometimes there are two really good things you have to choose between. Mm -hmm. um, and as we're reading this book, you'll see um, these decisions that come up for Huckleberry Finn and how he how he thinks about it and what, what decisions, how he comes to making um, a decision on what to do. Um, so as we are continually reading the book, think about these questions and ponder how the, the characters in the story, how they react when certain situations come up and how they would answer these questions. Um, and you can also ask your own questions. You are free to do that. This is a great thing to do, is to, to think about your own questions. Um, so keep these papers, hold on to them, and then when we come back later, we, you can look at your answers to what you put before and see if that has changed in any, in any way um, and how it's been impacted by this novel. So, thank you, class. We will continue this later. Thanks so much.